Hi honeys, it's Michelle. I am here today to go over my, I guess, favorite books, really. These are books that I have read more than once. And if I've read them more than once, you know that they really touched me in some way, shape, or form. So in my personal opinion, these are really good books. And you should read all of them. And <laughs> if there's anything that you've read more than once, Tell me what they are because I am always looking for books that are that good. Because let's face it, there really aren't that many that are that good to where you'd want to read them more than once. If you hear loud sounds in the background, there's neighbor kids outside playing and we live in a concrete apartment complex so it kind of echoes a lot. To me, these are sounds of joy. They're happy kids playing outside. I see so much stuff about kids not playing outside anymore that I'm going to embrace it and love it. I will never ask them to, to quiet down because there's nothing quite like being able to be a kid and just being able to let loose and be loud. I can't, I can't play like that now. If I scream like that now, it, well, it wouldn't be acceptable. Um, and then I also have the AC on. <laughs> if you're wondering why and why I look kind of red and bloated, um, you might want to watch the other video that I just posted. That video is called Scary News, and I go into what's going on in that video if you want to know why I'm kind of red and bloated and why the AC is on. I don't want to think anymore about what I'm going through physically or the pain that I'm in. I want to talk about something happy and concentrate on something that I enjoy. So now that I did that video, I got my tears out, feeling better. I just want to just want to talk about something happy, which is my love of books. So even if nobody watches it, fine. <laughs> I don't even care because I'm just doing this, you know, and it feels good. Well, you can bet your bottom dollar that these are not new releases, if I've read them more than once. The first book is The Friday Night Knitting Club by Kate Jacobs. I think we all crave this situation. This is a life where we get together with a close group of women who support each other. This book really motivated me to join a crochet circle because I crochet a lot and I'm hoping to find a new club here. The, the main character, she ends up having some big issues with her life and they go into her past and the women in the circle, their pasts. They all kind of talk and work it out and help her. It's just such a nice book about female friendship and the connections and the bonds that we end up getting with each other. And I think there was one that came after this too, which I did read, but I didn't like it as much as this one. This book <laughs> I got for my 13th birthday. So I've been reading it for 10 years now. <laughs> um, I've read it every year, every year in the springtime. I like to read this. Which makes sense. My birthday's in the end, at the end of spring. Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. My brother bought this for me as a birthday gift. The reason I love this book so much, it opens my mind to remember my child within and to think more about where and why other people are coming from. It's just such a beautiful book. I love the characters. I love the storyline. I love everything. And this is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And I'll put, I'll try to find links to all these books and put them down below. Hopefully I'll be able to find everything. Some of them are out of print, so I, I, I might not be able to find all of them. The Kind of Love That Saves You by Amy Yerk. This is a tearjerker, but it's also funny. And it highlights the bonds between women when they become close friends and it's a reminder to cherish your loved ones. It's the kind of love that saves you by Amy Yerk. It's a really good book, but be prepared. If you get it, you're going to cry. The next one, the joy luck club. This is about family bonds and how our past can affect our current actions. This is also about female connection and I also love this movie. This is one of the few movies that I think was good, as good as the book, or closely represented the book. So I love the movie, I love the book. 
I don't know how many times I've read this, probably at least five times now. It's something I like to revisit when I'm in a certain kind of mood, like when I need a certain amount of comfort. Maybe I should read it right now. <laughs> I'm in need of some comfort. Uh, but this book is uh, also, it made me feel in my heart that one day I wanted to learn how to play Mahjong. That's one thing that has happened since I got to Vegas. I did learn how to play and I go every week and I really love it. It gives me social interaction and girl time and I'm trying to really put myself out there and make more friends now because I used to be such a like homebody with no friends and poor Brad was my only social interaction and that's too much to put on one person. <laughs> so this is the Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. I love her writing. I love her books. Okay, you'll get a kick out of this. In 1991, when I was 14 years old, I saw this book on a holiday romance novel rack at a bookstore. It was Walden Bookstore, <laughs> just to give you an idea of how long ago it was. My mom bought it for me. She was always really cool about not trying to hide this kind of stuff from me. And by the time you're 14, let's face it, you're interested in romance and what it all means and love and all that. She got me this book and I read it. It's called Christmas Night by Karen Rafferty. It's a cozy, quick read. It's kind of like that one movie that you wish Hallmark would make with everything in it, but they haven't made yet. It's filled with Christmas spirit and it highlights that finding love can be healing and help someone become more comfortable with who they really are. Now, I've been reading this book every year at Christmas since I was 14 years old. And for a long time, the part where it talks about finding love can make you more comfortable with being who you are, I thought it was a bunch of crap because I had felt like finding love did the opposite. It made me feel like I couldn't be myself because I kept choosing partners that were really, really critical of me. But now when I read it, it's like, oh, I see what you meant, Karen. <laughs> it's true. When you have that acceptance and that love from someone and it's tr a true companionship situation, you really do feel more comfortable about being who you are and just going with it because you have somebody who accepts you for you, which is wonderful. Anyway, I highly recommend this book. For Christmas or any time that you want to get in that Christmas spirit. And I don't know, it's, it's probably not, I mean, 1991, it's probably not in print anymore, but maybe you could find it somewhere. I don't know. Love this book. You know what? I just have to add this too. Part of why I love this book so much, <laughs> it takes place in a mall. Okay. So this girl here, she's a photographer who dresses up as an elf <laughs> and her dad, that's not her dad is Santa Claus. And so they do the pictures with the kids at the mall. And this guy here, he like owns the mall or something. I can't remember right now, but romance ends up happening with these two. But it's just kind of neat. They're walking around in the mall together. They're eating in the food court. And it reminds me of when I used to work at the mall at Christmas time. And malls just aren't what they used to be. They used to be this bustling, energetic, fun place at Christmas. Now... <laughs> You watch all those Black Friday Walmart videos and you just want to shop from home, right? Up next, Love Lucy by Lucille Ball. She is so funny and inspiring and wise. I'm looking at my notes on the back, sorry. I love reading about her. She really was a pioneer in her field. And I loved reading about her relationship with Desi, why it fell apart, and what ways they will always care about each other and in what ways they never did. <laughs> the filming of I Love Lucy and then all the happiness that came in her life after her divorce and after I Love Lucy was over. Lucille Ball was just bursting with knowledge. This is one of those books where, and I've read it quite a few times, but I had to write down multiple things that she said in here and more than one journal or diary to remember them because I just love the things that she has to say about life and what she learned in her life. Love Lucy by Lucille Ball. It's about to get real in here, but 
books can really affect you in a huge way and they can change your life forever. And these next two books kind of did. <laughs> this book I found on a clearance rack in about 1996 at a Barnes and Noble. This is Follow Your Heart by Susanna Tamaro. This is about a woman facing death who writes a letter to her granddaughter. Now she had raised her granddaughter, telling her all of her secrets, who she really was, who her granddaughter's mother, her daughter was, what she learned in her life, and how important it is to follow your heart. So I've read this book countless times. There was a point in my life where there was three different books that I kept reading over and over again. And those three books inspired me to leave my first husband who was abusive. That's a pretty big deal. Now, I still think they're good books, but if they were able to inspire me like that and to touch me in that way, I mean, this book for me, it was like the life that she described that people should have, I wanted, and I knew I wasn't in that life. And I needed to get out of the situation I was in to have the life that she was talking about. But it also kind of reminded me that it might be okay to actually not be happy and to want something different for life. It was a hugely epic, important book in my life. Follow Your Heart by Susanna Tamaro. And as you can see, if you look at the side of it, all these pages that are dog-eared. Have you ever seen the movie White Oleander? If you have, the author of that book, which was also amazing, wrote this book, Paint It Black. Her name is Janet Fitch. My grandma gave me this book. Now this book is quite racy. <laughs> My grandma said, now this is when I was in that moment where I was really like, I think I need to get out of this marriage. She tells me, I read this and you have to read it. Okay. I was surprised that my grandma read this book because like I said, it's, it's rated R. So I read it and it's all about strength and creativity and how we let other people control us and how when we're letting other people control us, we make excuses for them. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's kind of epic, right? I mean, when you think about relationships, how easy it is to get into a dangerous relationship. And this book really helped me see how destructive what I was living in was. And this book helped me get the courage to leave. And then the other one that I don't have a copy of to hold up for you, it's called, um, She's, I've got notes on the back of these, by the way. It's called uh, She's Come Undone by Wally Lamb. That book really helped as well. Just especially with that one. I guess I can put this down because I'm not talking about this one anymore. But She's Come Undone helped me realize how much people can manipulate us and change our thinking and make us feel like we're going mad when maybe we're not. <laughs> Which sounds crazy, but... Um, when you're in that kind of destructive relationship, you can get caught up in that and it's hard to see it. Other people see it, but you don't. That book really helped me see that. And so those three books, I just kept reading them over and over and over again until I left. And then I put them all down. And I don't know if I've read any of them since. Maybe I should, but they just helped me so much in that era of my life. So the next uh, couple books are a little bit lighter after such a heavy, dark subject. <laughs> this book, Ramona and Her Mother. So this is not the edition that I had as a little girl. But when I was a little girl, my mom bought this for me. And I feel like I was about six years old when she got it for me. And she read it to me out loud. And I just loved this book the connection between Ramona and her mom and the kind of little girl that Ramona was my mom used to say you're just like Ramona looking back yeah that was me <laughs> I have read this book since then as an adult and it's just kind of comforting to go back into my childhood and I remember the first time I read this by myself with my own eyes and not somebody reading it out loud how proud of myself I was I think I was about seven at that point. 
when I started reading books that didn't have pictures in them. I've always just had such a love of reading. This next book was made into a movie. The movie was pretty good, but I still like the book more. What else is new, right? Am I right? It's like the book is never as, or the movie's never as good as the book, except Joy Luck Club. But otherwise, I always feel like they did something wrong that they shouldn't have done or something. But this is another book I got on a clearance rack. See, clearance racks are where it's at. You might as well just shop there. They put the best books on there, and I don't know why, but that's where I always find them. This is Where I Leave You by Jonathan Tropper. It's a fast read. It's super funny, and it's got a lot of family drama, betrayal, growth. I had a couple parts where I cried in it, but I was laughing a lot, too. This book is about mistakes, family bonds, and sometimes the lack of family bonds, and what, what do you do with that? Basically, the main character finds out he's getting a divorce and his dad dies and he has to go home and he's Jewish. He has to go home with his family and sit Shiva for seven days and nights under the same roof. <laughs> and his family has a lot of issues. So it's, it's a good book. I really recommend it. It's funny. It's compelling. It's kind of everything you want all wrapped up into one book. And it's simple. It's not too brainy or difficult to read or anything. So, Lisa C. I love Lisa C. She just knows how to write in a way that touches me. I love her books. I know this will sound strange, but I almost feel more alive when I'm reading her books. It's like she lights this candle inside me or something. It's really fascinating, but <laughs> it's a whole other video, right? This is The Shanghai Girls by Lisa C. I get so invested in her books and attached to her characters. This book has loss, jealousy, sacrifice, love, and an emotional look into the history of China. It's so good. It's about these two sisters and they lose everything. They find out that their father has sold them to be married to people that they didn't choose. And it's just so fascinating reading about the direction that both of their lives take over the course of years thereafter. They love each other, but they're jealous of each other too. Now, I don't have a sister, so I don't really understand that whole thing, but I think it's pretty well known that that's how sisters are with each other. So I've read this book, I think it's three times now, and just talking about it makes me want to read it a fourth time. So I just might read it soon. I might put it back in my to read pile. <laughs> Here's a good classic for you. The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. This is another book that gives you a historical look, but this one looks in, into the 1930s U.S. Dust Bowl. I got really attached to the characters in this book as well, and to a turtle crossing the road. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It helps me understand uh, my ancestors when I'm doing my genealogy and what they went through. And it's a reminder of how good I have it. How spoiled I really am. How spoiled you really are. We're all so spoiled compared to people that had to go through this era in America. Such a good book. If you haven't read it, you might want to. I feel like we should all read it at least once. Okay, guys, this is the last book. I know this has been a long video, but we're on the last one. This is The Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. I love, now this is another one about history. This is another American history book though. So I love reading about the history of America and the way things used to be. And this is definitely a good look into that. But I also love reading about the resilience that we all have inside of us. And this book really highlights that. For me, this book was about how we all crave a home. We always have ourselves and that what we really have to do is make ourselves home because that's the only forever in our lives. Everything else changes. People walk out of our lives. If you try to go back home, it's not the same place anymore. You know, you have to move to different places. You know, you'll, you're very few people that I've ever heard of live in the same home their entire lives. Like it, it, everything's changing. 
the one constant that you have in your life is you. You. So this book made it very clear to me how important it is when we become adults to define what home is for us and how to, how to create that. What we consider home is still going to change throughout the course of our lives. So once again, all, the only really constant that we have is ourselves. But man, this book was so good. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. My favorite book of all time out of these is To Kill a Mockingbird. Love this book. I don't know if anything will ever replace it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's not possible, but I don't know that it is possible. I was just talking about creating home. There's something about this book and the characters in it that are home to me. And that might be why I read it every year. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments if there's any books that you have reread. Because I want to read them too. Also, be sure to give me a like and subscribe if you liked this video. And go ahead and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when I post more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.